If the beginning of the video starts to upset you, please continue watching all the way through. The intent is to make the discourse in our communities just a little bit better. I think you'll see why. It's not a review, it's not a tip, it's time to relax with a little toy talk. Hey there collectors, it is Steven here, and uh, you know what, I got a new sort of type of video for you. I've been trying to toy around with this series for a little while, and I've done a couple of different things over the years where I've tried to do this, and I think I finally landed in an area that I can do these rather consistently. And I think this will work. So moving forward, let's say this is the official reset of the Toy Talk series where I can pick a topic, talk about it, where if you want to just leave the video up while you go ahead and do your thing throughout the day. And uh, yeah, you can just watch it or you can actually watch the video. So listen, watch it, whatever you want to do. Yeah, episode one. And what? An episode, the first entry, official entry, I guess you might say in the series. Let's talk about the boogeyman of collecting scalpers. So I've seen a lot of comments recently in different groups and the word is just thrown around ever, ever so frequently. It's related to people selling their collection, people selling individual figures, people who are selling stuff where someone bailed on them for a sale and they're just looking to get whatever they put into it back, whatever the case may be. Scalper, 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 scalper. Now, in some of those cases, absolutely, the word is warranted. Others, uh, not so much. And I think what really needs to happen here is an agreement on what that is. Because if someone actually is scalping, uh, well, you know, throw them to the wolf, so to speak. But if they're not, I don't really think it's fair to lump them all in together and say that, uh, well, this guy is doing the exact same thing as this guy over here, and this guy over here is being a total, gonna say it, dickhead, which that guy's not really being a dickhead. Yeah, yeah. So let's start first. Let's talk about what the actual operational definition here for scalping is going to be. Now, admittedly, Urban Dictionary has quite a few uh, appropriate definitions for scalping and scalpers, and I'm going to go ahead and throw them up here on the screen. Uh, so yes, good job. I think those are rather fitting. But uh, Investopedia, I think, has a very good definition as well if you wanted to clean up the language a little bit and make it a bit more appropriate if you wanted to show this video to your mom. Now, with that being said, I think we can narrow it down a bit further than that, and we can simply operationalize it as somebody who is looking to buy product, to remove it from the market, to manipulate the market, to then reintroduce the product at a higher price. Meaning, Godzilla goes away, then Godzilla comes back in because I put him back in the market, and now he's worth more. So that is essentially what scalping would be. Now, continuing on through this video, I want to tackle three main topics that I see frequently in different collector groups, buy, sell, trade groups, uh, that are frequently around scalpers, two of which, eh, no, not really, one of which, yeah, absolutely, and then we'll just have a little bit of extra talk on the side about, you know, kind of what may or may not fall into a gray area, kind of your own choice, and I have representation of everything right here on my table. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, let's just name some names here, okay? So we're going to have Johnny be the person who's going to be buying everything, okay? So whenever I talk about Johnny, he's going to be the one who's buying, he's buying, he's buying. And Jimmy, he's going to be the one who's selling everything. So in all the scenarios, Johnny's buying, Jimmy's selling, and we're going to change the scenarios, but it's going to be easy just to use the same names throughout so this way I don't get confused. And hopefully you don't get confused. And of course, if I get something wrong, if I get it, go ahead and timestamp it and put it in the comments. So this way, uh, you know, I'm able to see, uh, well, how dumb I was. <laughs> okay. Okay. So the first sort of scenario I kind of want to talk about would be items that have order windows that close. And then they sell for a lot on the after market. So some examples of this are going to be NECA's Toka and Razor set, uh, the SH Figuarts, Super Saiyan Blue Vegito, things like that. Now, these figures, they have effectively an endless production run. 
Now, in some situations, they may have limited capacities to which then the manufacturer will close the order window and then open another order window for shipment at a later date. Now, see here, in this scenario, Johnny can place his order whenever he wants to, as long as what's in that order window. And Jimmy, he can do the same thing as well. If Jimmy's looking to sell the figures for whatever the case may be, whether he's going to buy one to enjoy for himself and one to sell later, so this way he can recoup the cost of his own in case Johnny would decide that he's not gonna buy it now and he's gonna buy it later, then the question is, what did Jimmy do to screw Johnny over from getting one of these sets. What sort of influence did Jimmy have in screwing over Johnny? You really have to sort of take a step back and think about that because throughout that whole period, Johnny could have ordered Toka and Razor, but he didn't. He could have ordered Vegito, but he didn't. Now that could be due to a variety of reasons, which it could have been didn't know about the time window, that it was open, didn't have the money then, for whatever reason, in Toka and Razor's case, folks are gambling on another production run, hitting Walmart, whatever the case may be. Uh, some folks, in the case of Vegito Blue, um, just waiting till it comes out and then hopefully finding someone who will sell it at bro prices. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But effectively, if Jimmy is buying any of these and he's going to sell them later on the aftermarket, once orders close, Jimmy did not contribute in any way, shape or form to Johnny not getting one of these during that order window because he could have ordered, but he didn't. So is that scalping? I would say no. Again, the reason being is Jimmy didn't manipulate the market to remove these from Johnny's possibility of buying them. They were there. Endless orders. Johnny just didn't order one. So that doesn't really fall on Jimmy for Johnny not getting them or Susie or Sally. It's just aftermarket now. You can only get them secondhand from anyone other than the manufacturer or distributor. So is it right that Jimmy may be selling it for two, three, four hundred percent markup? Mm, that's not for me to talk about in this video, and that's not the point. That would, I guess, be for the community to decide. However, for the definition of scalping, mm, not necessarily. I wouldn't say that's scalping. I would just say, again, that's kind of the aftermarket. So Johnny, sucks you didn't get it, but I would say uh, not necessarily scalping. Now, sort of on that next topic again, for scalping, it was operationalized as purchasing for the intent of removing from the market and then reintroducing at a higher price. Now, I would say that in this next scenario, technically it's scalping in the long term, but not really. Why is that? Well, let's say you have a figure in your collection that you buy when it comes out. Let's take the Monster Arts Godzilla birth version here. You get it on release and then time goes by. You fall out of love with the figure. Let's say there's a new version that comes out, a better representation of Godzilla that you have on your shelf now and you don't necessarily like it. You haven't been paying attention to the aftermarket prices. You know, you don't know what's going on, what happened, what's happening right now. So Jimmy here, he just has this sitting on his shelf, right? He doesn't know what's going on and he decides, you know what, it's time to let this go and let another collector have it. So he takes a look on eBay, he takes a look on Facebook, Mercari, wherever it may be, and he sees this figure that he paid, let's say $70 for, is now going for $140 used out of box. New, it's going for more than $200. Well, in this scenario, we've been, what is it now, six years since the initial release? I'm thinking it's 2020, so seven years or so since the initial release, and in this scenario, yes, it was removed from the market and is now being reintroduced at a higher price. However, however, Jimmy has used this figure, he's consumed it, so to speak, and he enjoyed it. And then at this point, he no longer wants it and is reintroducing it to the market just so this way, hey, he can get the money to buy for the rest of his collection. So, Johnny's looking to make the purchase. He's not buying from someone who managed to find one of these hidden in a hole in the wall store for MSRP that was new in box, purchased it, and then is turning it around on eBay for 200 bucks or so. That would be scalping. 
But Jimmy here, he's not exactly doing that. He had a figure that he no longer wants in his collection, he had a good time with it, and it's time to let it go. I would argue, is he entitled to what it's worth? Well, yeah, that's a question to pose, but that's not exactly something that I'm looking to get an answer for in this video, or to specifically address. So for here, would I say that that's scalping? No, not exactly. That's just somebody who's looking to just get money for what it's worth. Years have gone by, that's the aftermarket price, and unfortunately for Johnny, that is going to be the reality of collecting. Sometimes there's what's called the latecomers tax. I've paid it myself, if you've been collecting for long enough, you're gonna have to pay it, it's just what comes with the territory, because you can't keep stuff in production forever, and there's supply and demand. Once supply runs out and demand is still going up, prices will go up, because naturally, hey, if I can make another buck or two off of it, I'm gonna do it. That's just how sometimes the market goes. So again, is selling stuff from your personal collection which you enjoyed and you no longer want? Scalping? No. Now, should Jimmy maybe work a deal out with Johnny? Yeah, I would say it. I'd encourage that. Bro prices, those are good. It's collector karma. I've had that happen to me, and I do encourage folks to do that yourselves, uh, but that is ultimately back to your choice. So, selling stuff in your collection and just getting what maybe fair market value is? No, I wouldn't necessarily say that that's scalping. Now, here's the moment you've all been waiting for. We've covered this half. <laughs> now let's cover this. So, again, scalping. The intent to purchase something, to remove from the market, to reintroduce at a higher price. We have NECA Ninja Turtles here, recently released Wrath of Krang, and then the premium Bandai King Ghidorah here. Now, this is, this is pod racing, folks. No, this is scalping. So, with some examples I'm going to throw up here on the screen, we do have ourselves instances of scalping. And uh, yeah, yeah, so here is, is kind of where we get into that stereotypical scalper mindset, the removal of product to reintroduce. Here, we all keep it in perspective, collector's items that are unnecessary if you don't need it and can't swing it. Just take a pass. Dealers can only charge what people are willing to pay. The term scalpers are used. Scalper is offensive. Buy low, sell high is the root of capitalism. No, it's not. There's no such thing as a scalper unless someone buys it. Absolutely not true. If the only way I can buy something is because you took it off the shelf and then you're attempting to sell it back to me, uh, no, no, you, you are not a, a dealer. You are not an authorized distributor, you're not an authorized retailer, you are someone who is screwing around with the market, you are sitting around on Yahoo Japan auctions, and you're taking stuff that I would be interested in, I would be paying a quarter of the price, because you seem to think that it is worth significantly more, and you're just taking my money, and you would be saying, well, I'm doing the work to get this item for you, no, I have the tools to do it myself, you just want to take an extra 50 to $150 from me, so uh, you make this hobby significantly more of a pain in the ass for me and everyone else who is in it. Then we have the idea behind Mezco Gomez, which Mezco themselves have even joked about. And by joking, I mean like they've made fun of the people who do this. Their Gomez figures, as soon as they go up on their site for order, they immediately go down because people buy them, then put them on eBay with sale confirmed. Uh, Gomez usually goes for about 150 uh, MSRP, they go up on eBay anywhere from $350 to $450. Absolutely not cool. Why are you doing this? You're just looking to make money. Uh, I hate to say it, but you can probably make money other ways. I mean, job, feet picks, I don't know. Kind of have to just pick your poison there. Why are you making this hobby worse for other people? Then there's this sort of idea that there are people who uh, may have connections to official distributors who used to run websites where they would scalp. There may be some other things that I'm not going to talk about here for other risks. But yeah, why are you selling Monster Arts figures for more than double retail shortly after they ran out of stock at retailers? That uh, is, is kind of not, not fun at all. And then uh, here's something else I just want to go into a little bit later. So put a pin in this idea. 
uh, scalper, did, did, did you call me a scalper? No, I, I performed a service here, gentlemen. Uh, the service costs money. Uh, I'm a middleman. No, 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 you are in fact not. And then, uh, here, here is a fantastic one <laughs> that I, uh, I, I, I got sent to me. Uh, this is in regards to NECA's TMNT Ultimate Krang. Uh, there was someone on eBay who had the, uh, cojones to actually admit that he and a buddy wait in the parking lot of targets when the UPS truck come in. So this way they can clear out targets for these TMNT figures. Good job target enforcing the one per policy. Good job there. So yes, that is what would be scalping. Not someone who is kind of sort of in a gray area buying more stuff just with the intention to sell to folks who didn't order for whatever reason. Not someone who's looking to sell stuff from their personal collection to make money, but we're talking in this area here. The people who are looking to go to a Target to order something, not, not even this one, um, the Casey Jones and Raff in Disguise two pack where Walmart's got two of them people camping in the parking lot of Walmart to when it opens up to get the only two of and to sell them for $150, $200. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, not cool. People who buy out their local targets of the Bebop and Rocksteady TMNT figures from NECA. Mm -mm. No, not cool. The people who sit on Yahoo Japan auctions to buy three of the Kaiju Bangaichi King Ghidorah or the Mecha Godzilla sets. Yeah, you're going to buy up the fake Godzilla set and then the three pack of the Mecha Godzilla and then you're going to sell them off individually for 100 to 150 bucks a piece. Yeah, no, that's not cool. I mean, that falls de immediately within that definition. Uh, I don't know what purpose you have aside from just trying to simply make money, which again, there are other means to do that. And the only thing that those people are doing is just making the hobby more difficult for the people who are trying to enjoy this. Like for me, Krang, thankfully, I was able to get a hold of very easy with King Ghidorah here. Hmm, this one in particular, no. Uh, I paid for it, but I was blessed enough to be able to get my hands on one of these. I know the outlets where I'm able to get my stuff, thankfully, rather easy. But I, come on, come on. There are folks who, I guess, tomato, tomato, uh, objectively should not be called scalpers. Uh, and there are folks who should. If you sit on Yahoo Japan auctions and you're screwing around with people who have the ability to get these things at cost, you're not providing a service. You are not providing anything other than a means to screw around with availability. Uh, you're scalping. If you are showing up to conventions and you are trying to prey on people who don't know anything different other than uh, what you are setting the prices at, like I'm talking about the people who sell Monster Arts Biolante at particular conventions for a thousand dollars when even if you were to check ebay <laughs> when that sale happened and they cap out at seven hundred dollars uh, i don't care what your excuse is for fees uh, that's scalping end of discussion if you are going to sell uh polystone shin godzilla family set evolutions second third and fourth form for fourteen hundred dollars or higher at a particular convention and they cannot sell out on the big retailers the japanese retailers for 150 bucks you're scalping okay that's just what it is at the end of the day there's no way to defend yourself there's no way to form that you're not being a dealer you're not providing a service that is what you're doing at the end of the day mm, there's no further discussion to be had on that my numbers specifically what i'm referencing may be incorrect i'm just spitballing it here i'm just going off of my memory off the cuff here uh but yeah that's kind of what it is at the end of the day now here's that sort of extra stuff the kibble bits i wanted to talk about what about retailers who during a pre-order period are buying stuff to sell it at a slight markup well, well i would say it depends um first and foremost i would say a fool and his money are soon parted. Uh, do your research so this way you know where to get your stuff at. Know that certain things are only going to be sold directly through a retailer and certain things are only going to be available through a particular website for a limited period of time. Like this guy, Vegito, only available through the USP Bandai site if you're in the US. Anywhere else, they're buying directly through that site and then they're selling it for a markup to cover their own overhead and uh, to get a little extra money. So yeah, keep that in mind. And then there's going to be the legitimate middlemen websites or proxy services or forwarding services. These are going to be, let's keep it import related. Uh, 
Japanese companies who are going to have, let's say, a 500 yen forwarding fee. So this way they get items sent to them and then they send it over to you or there may be a proxy service. So this way they go through the effort of purchasing something for you uh, with their own services and then they send you an invoice and then you go ahead and pay for it. And then that would be legitimate as well. That's not scalping. OK, sometimes that fee is 500 yen. Sometimes it's a thousand yen. Sometimes it's 1500 yen, depending on the item. Sometimes it's 10 percent of the item, which is a little bit absurd, but it is what it is no that's not scalping i mean that's a legitimate fee now if you're talking like let's say buying one of these king Ghidorah sets and uh well let's say selling it for four hundred dollars which i have seen before uh that's scalping now if you're going to use a proxy service where you see one of these on yahoo japan auctions you're going to charge somebody who's going to be buying this let's say a mm, thousand yen that's not bad folks that's not bad and oh yeah the base cost of this was only twenty two thousand yen mm -hmm. now that's a proxy service that's a good thing to do so yeah so at the end of the day what are we talking about here okay there are some things that pop up in Facebook groups. There are some things that pop up on forums where people are a little quick to just go ahead and pull the trigger and call someone a scalper and say that, hey, you're a dick. Why are you doing this? Maybe take a second to step back and really question exactly what they're doing and think critically because eh, you snooze, you lose. That's the aftermarket. I'm not going to say that because I'm going to get demonetized. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully I'm able to really help redirect that frustration, especially during this time at the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. Did you ever think about that this year is 2021? Yeah. Where everyone's kind of tight on money. Let's refocus the anger where it needs to be. Okay. Okay. So again, this was sort of an experimental video. I really want to help try to sort of help the community a little bit more. That's what my attempt is here. Drop your comments down below your thoughts. I like this type of video. I had fun doing it. I had fun preparing for it. And I really want to know your thoughts moving forward. Do you want to see more types of videos like this? Do you not? Let me hear it. I'm fully open for discussion so long as it's coherent. One, two words, not going to be helpful for me. I'll just remove them. Okay? Okay. With that being said, thank you so much for watching. I don't know how well this video is going to perform, and I took a risk, and the only way that I'm able to do this risk is thanks to the patrons who help out the channel. That's the only way I'm able to do stuff like this, because I can take a little bit of a risk and say, hey, the video, the channel will still be okay. So thank you all so much for kicking off 2021. Amazingly, it really does mean the world. And of course, here's the end card where you can check out some other videos while I begin the process of working on the next one. All right, so 2021, let's kick it off well with a good start. I'll catch you in the next video.